Okay, so now let's move on to the pony wall framing. And if you take a look at the designs and plans on my website, you'll see that some of the domes come with a pony wall already incorporated into the design and others don't. That's usually an aesthetic or practical choice made by me to save you some material, to save you some time, to create a more efficient space. That being said, it's really simple to add a vertical pony wall to any of the dome designs. And I've had many people do that successfully. So let me walk you through these 3D models and show you a couple of different aspects of the pony walls and their construction. And keep in mind that all these 3D models are available to download on my website and they correspond directly to their respective build plans. Okay, so let's take this dome for an example. This is our 23 foot, seven meter diameter barn dome. It's a four frequency dome and it has four unique panels. It's a three eighths division, which basically means that the dome section is three eighths roughly of a full sphere. So the reason I added a small pony wall to this was basically if you didn't have a pony wall, it would be directly on the ground and that would make the dome too short. However, if you extended the division and made it a half division, and you cover all that dome surface area with polycarbonate, you're kind of using a lot of polycarbonate, which is expensive, in a place that you don't really need to. And since this dome was originally designed to be a greenhouse, I made the pony wall 32 inches high for efficiency and because that's about the height that would be appropriate for raised beds. Now, if you wanted to make this a living space and have everything be on the ground floor, you might bump that pony wall up to 36 inches because that's about where a counter height finishes out at, which makes it easy to build counters and cabinets right off of your pony wall. Now, if you wanted to add a sleeping loft to that same dome, you'd probably want to increase the division maybe to a half division and then maybe put it on another pony wall to give you some more height. So there's a few reasons why we might use a pony wall. Now let's talk about how we would do it. Okay, so back to our barn dome, which is a four frequency dome. If we look at the pony wall sections, there's actually only three sections, but two of them are mirrored. In the three frequency dome, there's only two unique sections, but two of them are mirrored as well. So when you get a set of plans that already has the pony wall incorporated into the design, it's already gonna have all the specific measurements and angles for all the components and members. So all you have to do is set your saw, make your marks, and cut your two by fours according to the plan. Now, if you have one of our dome plans that doesn't already have a pony wall incorporated into the design, but you wanna add one, that's also easy to figure out. You just need to find the base section page on the plan. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add as much height as you want evenly to both sides. So in this case, say we wanted about a two foot pony wall, we could simply add two feet to each side. So let's give an example. Let's say we added two feet to each side of a base section. Now we wanna make a pony wall out of it. If you're gonna be using plywood on the exterior of the pony wall, if you're gonna add siding or something, otherwise you can just make a template by marking on a table or a spare piece of wood. Then all you have to do is frame to that template. I always start out with the top and bottom plate. And even though the top is raked a little bit, it doesn't need to have a compound cut at the end and it doesn't need to be a different length. So now that we got our plates made, we can fill in our studs so we can decide how often we want our studs. Maybe it's one foot on center, maybe it's two foot on center, maybe we just split it into three, and then we can lay them over top and cut them to length. Now all you have to do is figure out how many sections you have and then cut all the components for each section that you need. And because we're not cutting a bunch of compound angles and stuff, because the angles are so slight, you can just move all these pieces around to arrange to make its mirrored pair. So one last consideration we have to make with the pony wall is how do we interface it with the dome itself. For our regular beveled frame methods, you can usually just put a small piece of wood that's ripped to the angle on top of a flat pony wall. However, because we're doing the deep frame method on this dome, we had to actually angle the full width of the pony wall so that the dome frame was completely seated. That doesn't really change anything for your top and bottom plate, but it does mean that your studs will have a miter cut on them. Otherwise, the process is the same. 
So in this situation, plywood is going on the outside of each pony wall section. So I've got all those cut, and then I was able to size my framing material and cut those ahead of time as well. The nice thing about having the plywood is that you can then attach your framing to the plywood and you know that it'll keep everything true. That being said, if you have a template, you can assemble the frame and then make sure that it's not racked out of square and then add your siding or your um, greenhouse plastic or polycarbonate. You also don't have to use a framing nail gun to put all the framing together. You can use structural screws like we do with the dome frame. But that's pretty much it. And now we can start putting things together. So the process for laying out the base sections of the pony walls is going to be the same whether you're building it on a deck or if you're building it on gravel pad or foundation. The base of the dome is not necessarily going to match up perfectly with the deck and it's designed that way to make the deck building easier. If there is a discrepancy, it's always the dome that's going to overhang the deck frame by an eighth or a quarter inch maximum. Therefore, what we want to do is lay out the base sections or pony walls independently of the deck or the gravel pad. And we do this by laying out all the base sections and tacking them to each other first, but not attaching them to the ground yet. Once you've made your way all the way around the dome base, you'll put a placeholder for the doorway and now you've got the whole structure and as you pull those measurements, you'll be tacking the base sections to your foundation, your deck, or the earth. And once you've got those measurements correct on every corner, you know that your pony walls or base sections are totally lined up where they need to be. And once you're happy with that, you can start stacking your panels. Okay, that about wraps up this episode of dome craft thanks for sticking around and please let me know if you have any questions you can feel free to leave those in the comment section below or shoot me an email anytime if this video helped you please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel it really helps get this info out there for folks who are building their own domes and making their dreams come true in the next episode we're going to jump into deck framing for the domes and zones and do a deep dive into that. All right. Thanks, everybody.